Hello, 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 and welcome back to another horrible video. And today, we are going to be going over the history of waste of space. But first, who is Johnson? And why can't he be parsed? Now, if you hear birds in the background, those are my birds. Say hi to them if you wish. They will be taking over this video. Hey guys, can you quiet down? Thank you. Uh, okay, I guess they didn't listen. Alright, well let's get started. So, first we have the very, very start. Where it all began, in fact. We're gonna run over here to make, to, to make the start. You know, because we all love, love the start. Okay. So this is the start of Waste of Space right here. The start of our timeline. To represent the line, we're going to have a piece of iron. There we go. Now, what was the start of Waste of Space like? Well, to put it firmly, Waste of Space didn't have much history at the start. Um, Waste of Space at the start consisted of many, many universes. Like, the universe was getting reset every, like, week, every two weeks, and then it kept gradually extending to, like, two months. Every two months, you were getting a reset for huge updates. In the middle of all that, the only real event that happened was the Space Arcade was built. One of the best things ever built in Waste of Space, you might see it in the thumbnail. That's really all that happened. So time passes, and that's really where the old community formed, right? But then, that time of waste of space ends. So somewhere here, somewhere here in the middle, we get we get the space arcade. Somewhere, yeah, right there, we get the space cade. And then here is where it pretty much ends for the very start of Waste of Space. And then we have the new. We name this one the last old for this generation. That was, was the last time the old players really existed. So here we go. The first event that I have here written on this list I've made is save packets. Now, save packets were this thing where on in a region, right? When you wanted to make stuff, you uh depending on the part, it would add data to the server. And eventually when you filled up a save packet, it would go to the next one. So one save packet, two save packet, three save packets, you get it. For example, one reactor takes up an entire save packet, right? Back then in Waste of Space, if you went over three save packets, it data wiped the region when you left the game. Unless you removed parts and fixed the dat before you left the game, which was good. But these save packets really limit the amount you could build in Waste of Space. So players had to get smaller with their creations. It happened around here. We're gonna make a sign here. Save packets. Right here, save packets. There, very first of the history. Then, we have the next event here. The rise of Nincraft. Now, we all know Nincraft today as this guy that's easy to destroy, easy to kill. And back then he was too. Except people liked him back then, right? He had followers. He had the Federation, a faction back then, one of the only factions. There were two others. I'm not allowed to disclose what they were. They were still like building up. But Federation owned by Nincraft and he had power because he had people. We'll get to 
he compressed back then. People didn't like him to that. We'll get back to Minecraft later. Not much right now to talk about him. The next thing I have on my list... Hold on, forgot the sign, but I'm gonna get two in preparation for the next one. We're gonna just write in here. Yeah. Now. Oh. So you may not know this, but in this time during Waste of Space, players actually had fun raiding. There was actually a chance that you might get into a battle with someone while raiding them, because they might have actually been there, because people used to play the game a lot. Chances of finding someone were very low, but when you did find someone, you could get into a fight. Didn't last very long, though, usually ending with warheads or bombs. But it was fun. And, well, people used to have actual events. Like, real events. In the game. Still not much to talk about. Next, we have on our list these two parts that were removed. Okay? We have the two parts. That's what I'm gonna name that. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Rating fun. And then we need another sign. Here, I'm just gonna get a bunch of signs. There we go. Okay. So here's what we got. Now there used to be these two parts in Waste of Space, right? <coughs> the force field and the healing laser. Now what the healing laser did it was colored orange, right? And it shot a green laser. So it looked like... I don't know if this is going to be orange. If I, yeah, no, okay. The laser itself was orange, and it shot a green laser. And it would heal the parts. Then there was a part called the force field. Now, it's gone now. But it could not be resized, and it was about... Here, let me get a representation of how big it was. Yep, this was the force field. It could not be resized, and it only worked on power, but I believe it was actually stronger. I never really got to use it, but I believe it was actually stronger than neutronium when powered, but you just can't resize it. So you had the healing laser used to heal ships in battle. No one really actually did that. Then you had the force field, which no one used. So next we have on our list we have the New Year Ball Drop, one of the best events to ever happen. So basically the New Year Ball Drop, here's how it went, right? We had this big pole and people brought four ships, right? Big pole about about yeah that tall and we had this like crystal ball. Now, I believe the ball was actually, like, an actual, like, ball made by the developers. Unobtain- Birds, can you- Hey! Hey! Can you- can you stop? Thank you. Okay. I believe it was, like, an actual ball that dropped. And, yeah, it was covered in, like, ruby and stuff, like, neons. Cool thing. Anyways, after the ball dropped, exactly five minutes later, this happened. We... Now, back then, bombs, right? Like, a wall. Right? They, it didn't raycast. <coughs> so, like, imagine, like, your ship is right here, right? These are the bombs. Anything inside of your ship, everyone's ships just got obliterated. Okay? Everyone's ships just got obliterated. Except mine. Mine got cut in half. Anyways, oh wait, no, I think I'm thinking of that. No, 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 I'm right. Next one was the emergence after the ball drop. The emergence and leaks of the... 
voice command ship. <coughs> Everyone thought it was so cool. Believe it or not, I forgot to add something here. This was the era of Vrick. Now, you may know Vrick as a griefer, uh, extremely homophobic, whatever you want to say. That's what you know him as. Back then, he was extremely helpful and loved person. Everyone liked him. Even the griefers, because he was a griefer himself. He chose who he helped. But he was a nice person back then. Very helpful. Vrick helps. That's what I'm going to name it as. People loved him. And he was actually the one who came out with the voice command ship and showed it off at the ball drop. And then that's when people were like, ooh, ooh, cool. But no one really did it. We'll talk to that later. Last thing we have for this timeline is a forgotten part that many of you don't know about. It was the cylinder shaped about this big, all right? It had a hinge. What am I doing? Uh, it had a hinge right there. It looked more like it was made of iron. <coughs> there was a part called the generator. Basically, when you spun the generator, it produced electricity. So like, if I took this and spun it, like if I just kind of like, here, let me, let me get a more accurate representation. There we go. I believe that's not going to work anymore. Okay, well, when you spun it however you wanted to, it would produce electricity, and you could get the electricity by placing an antenna on it and connecting it to your power grid. That was one of that was one of the best ways to get electricity in the game. That's how many people got electricity. It was removed for a bug abuse with it that came along, and people abused it to make extreme amounts of electricity. And with that, that's the end of the old generation. Still not much to talk about. <coughs> History, very little known. Hey birds! Hey birds! Thank you. Okay. Now. We're gonna call this one the new generation. This is... Now, you may see some players as old players. Many new players joined during this. You probably didn't join in this universe. Let me see here. I'm gonna get ten of these. Just, you know, give me a second. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Etc, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Okay, almost done. Okay, there. Now, first thing to happen. The rush, okay? The great rush. Now, here's what the great rush was. In the new universe, the older players realized what was happening. New players were coming. And they didn't want them to ruin... They didn't want the new players messing around with their shenanigans. So all the old players essentially went into hiding, went full fled, went full fledged like spy bunker mode type deal. And yeah, just live at their bases now. You probably haven't raided any of their bases. Um, they still play, and they sit at their base doing whatever the hell they they want, safe from the outside world of waste of space. Next, we noticed something happened in Waste of Space. With all these new players coming in, and the old players concealing their technologies now, and hiding away, there's this huge tech def deficit. Like, huge techno technological drop with the player base. Not knowing how to make simple things, like small backpacks, or turrets, torpedoes. No one knew. I mean, of course people knew, 
but it wasn't widely spread off and known. Like, like nobody did it. Nobody really knew how until they actually got around to, like, learning how it worked. It just didn't exist. Like, like you know how everyone uses impulses on ships? No, that wasn't a thing. No one... Hey, birds. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, you can talk. Okay, you know what? Fine, fine, fine. You're not humans. I, yeah, okay. Okay, I hear you. I guess you... Okay. Anyways. Like, putting impulse impulses on ships, right? That wasn't a thing. No one thought of it. Like, no one had the idea. Let's put an impulse cannon on a ship. Non-existent, okay? That, that was the type of game we were dealing with. Next, we have the war against Nincraft. Finally, we get back to Nincraft. And, well... This was like a three-month type deal with Nincraft, where these players... We were like trying to kill Nincraft, right? He was compressing. And we didn't like that. He had a group of people... And basically, the war went on, three months, people, like, killing him. And then eventually, his own teammates betray him, steal his ships, bring them to my base. I keep them as stowaways at my base and let them hide out there. Essentially what happened, Nincraft got betrayed so hard, faction fell apart, Federation dies, never to be seen again, until later again... To just fall apart again years after. Next, we have Comfun. After this, the waste of space community kind of died down with fighting because the newer generations were exploring the game, right? And the old generation was kind of done with fighting for now. So, you just had this calm moment of people like just messing around with random crap. And, like, they were just having fun in general at their bases, making stations in deep space. You know, stuff like that. Fun things. And then it all goes downhill from there. We get to the rise of fascism, okay? The rise of fascism in Waste of Space, also known as factions. And then the faction hub was formed. First, we have... The well-known, at this point, old factions forming from the ashes of the Federations and Backlash still cannot display the two older ones' names, but I'll display one of the newest ones at this point. The Mechanicus of Mars. Don't join them. <laughs> but, um... Mechanicus of Mars, one of the first factions to rise in Waste of Space. In the very early days of the new generation of players, Mechanicus of Mars was essentially the superpower. No, not the superpower. It was weak as hell, at that point at least. At one point, the Mechanicus does become a little more powerful than some others, but not the sole superpower. Non-existent. So, let me write that here. Factions rise. And we're gonna slap that baby right there. Next. Um, let me think here. What are we missing? We're missing something on this list. Oh, yes. In Waste of Space... After this, because of the war is that we're about to start from factions, players started developing weapons more. And other random crap. Torpedoes got made, eventually. Players realized you could put impulses on ships to slingshot them into multiple directions. Really fast, it became a trend. Another thing that happened was no that didn't happen yet the tur turrets started getting developed more before this turrets 
Manual turrets were better than automatic turrets, okay? Like, like if you went up to someone at this time and said, put an auto turret on your ship, they would call you an absolute idiot and say, go get your friend and put them in a manual turret on the side of your ship. That was better at that time. Because auto turrets were absolute crap. They missed. And then players at some point started editing them, making them better. But mainly the big reason why is because no one knew. The tech was out there. Some people knew. But the vast majority did not know how to not make the turrets fling off into the void. So manual turrets at this time were better. Because of that reason, players used manual turrets. Eventually ending this trend, auto turrets finally were made through hinge system. And players started doing things like breaking old myths. There was this old myth that you could land on the surface of a gas giant. Gas giants have no surface. And you would die and lose your ship. Players also started finding out different ways to survive on planets, making different types of backpacks to survive, different new types of ships. And then players started getting into coding, right? And coding became this new, started becoming a new trend where you would start putting code on things, make life simpler, cooler, funner. Voice command ships came out. <coughs> and started becoming more public at this point to players. Players started using voice command ships more, and it became this new trend. Kind of fun, right? And this is where this ends. We're the new generation. Now, at this point, this is where probably most of you have started playing Waste of Space. And I'm gonna name it the fall of Waste of Space, because Waste of Space probably won't get updated again. And this is the end of the history timeline, unless some faction stuff goes on, or like some organized players. So remember how I talked about coding? Well, coding became such this huge trend where if you don't code in Waste of Space, people see it as weird. Like, you don't have to code in Waste of Space, but people insist on it. I'm gonna name this Coding Jerks because there's this trend of people who can code seeing themselves as higher than others, and they're absolute jerks. Now, I'm not saying all coders are, but a lot are. And it kind of just ruins this whole aspect of coding. Of like, oh, waste of space, fun place, let's share our ideas. Or, like, let, let's, like, work together with our friends and, like, beat our enemies up. No, it's like, I'm this one person, I'm so cool, look at me, I can code, you all are absolute crap. No, no. And there became this false sense at this point in Waste of Space from the amount of coding there that became. That coding meant that you were, like, superior at combat as well. So you see these people go into combat, right? Their auto-aiming systems on their ships, everything decked out, coding. And they get absolutely destroyed by the guy with 500 guns on this. Like, the coding does not help. It's like, people start coding for these simple things. Like, um, organizing things in the base. They code for it. And I'm like, why? Well, I mean, if you do it for fun, fine. But they do it. But some people do it to, like, make life easier. And I'm like, that doesn't make life easier. You just made a screen display. And at this point, before before this, before the new, newer generation, or at basically at the end, near the end of the new generation, before this, players in Waste of Space knew resources were infinite. Was not a problem, right? Players just had base. We get to here. And players say that lazy, right? Lazy players come out of nowhere. They're like, oh, we need to buff things, buff production, buff electricity. No, you don't. 
resources and waste of space are infinite, but these players insist, new wave, they insist that waste of space is too hard to play, it's really not, you get mining lasers and you basically beat progression. Get an auto reactor, couple of mining lasers, you're set for life, full auto base. And but but these people exist. Then we get to this point where waste of space starts falling farther into great faction faction wars. Oh, I believe I forgot to add something to this one. Sorry that I forgot. Let me quickly once again. So after the faction rise, some beef goes on. Now, Tio might not know of this, the owner of the Mechanicus, but I was a very- and other players today might not think this is true, but at this time, I was a lo very lovable person. I was very fun, right? I had my own base that I let people into, I helped them, right? Save them when they got stranded in space. So I had a lot of people who liked me, right? A lot of people who enjoyed, like, just like, you know, I helped them, right? Now, let me basically explain the story, right? Tio here, or someone in the Mechanicus, don't know how, manipulates my friend into giving bass chords and basically makes me sound like a piece of crap to them. Even though I help my friend all the, t all the time, right? They had no reason to hate me. I did absolutely nothing to them. They manipulated my friend into telling them my bass coordinates, right? And they said it was a federation base, okay? No, it wasn't. They said I was in the federation. And everyone hated the Federation. They come raid my base, right? They fail miserably and barely do any damage, only getting away with my obelisk, which I rebuilt, because they failed to take other things. But after this attack, Tio may not know of this. Many people don't. Many people that know are gone because they weren't in it. But after this attack, and people heard of it, right? There were people on the side of Mechanicus inside of me just out of nowhere, because of this one attack, players started fighting each other, right? They started fighting each other at their bases, choosing sides. Like, there were base cords getting leaked all over the place, and, uh, like, like after that attack, people started leaking base cords to choose their side. It was this whole thing, and it was like, <coughs> like, one, like, one day, ten bases got raided in one day, it was, like, insane. Everyone was just, like... It was like the apocalypse had started. And then it kind of ended after, like, one or two days. Like, after a week, it all cooled down. And then you have the Age of Exploration. And then the fall, we explain these other things. But then we get to the Great Faction Wars, right? They weren't really great. They were kind of pathetic, actually. We have Sync attacking the Federation trying to regroup and reorganize and reform once again absolutely destroying them the federation once again falls and does not exist anymore federation absolutely gets crushed and humiliated once and for all other factions like the mechanicus do get some military victories i forgot on who but on some other factions um in actual battle now, I'm only going to imply battle because destroying people's bases offline, I just consider that as, like, raiding because you're not actually fighting anything. And none of these bases have defenses because uh, if you know very well, there's no defense that can stop a raider in Waste of Space. And even if it does, they come back. They don't stop. They just come back in a new ship. You can't stop them. At that, at that point, they just want to, like, destroy your base. Can't stop them. So, 
you have this huge faction war stuff going on. Goes on for months. Then you have this point in Waste of Space where people, I don't know why, start turning into furries and supporting, like, furryism or some crap across Waste of Space. And players start becoming furries. And, like, this whole, like, crusade starts against furries. And it's weird. It's, it's like, this whole furry thing. I don't know. It's weird to talk about. Now, during this... <coughs> before that even happened, this trend in Waste of Space started. Where players started doing mass griefing of other players. So players started doing mass griefing, and this is when Psycorp came and really took off the trend. Psycorp wanted to, like, basically terrorists, take out Waste of Space. They started nuking starter planets every 3 a.m. in the morning. That's what they did. And after this, we get to now, the end. This is where the history end ends, really. It's just a bunch of players being highly toxic in a game that was once still toxic, but kind of nice. Now, I did forget to mention something about these from here to here. No, from here to, like, here. There was a problem in Waste of Space, okay? That really limited things. You may know about of it as part shift, right? Now, a problem with part shift back then, it's not like part shift now. I'm pretty sure it was actually called part drift. Or maybe I'm getting mix them mixed up. <coughs> part drift, what happened was every time you warped, your ship literally just fell apart. Like, all the pieces let go of each other. Your ship, like, just fell apart. And you would have to rebuild it every time you warped. Unless you use this, the stutter liner. For some unknown reason, this part increased your ship's lifetime before falling apart by like 20 warps around that. No one knows why. It just did. And, well, that's how it worked, really, back then. So players didn't make huge shit. I mean, they did, but they weren't used. This is where platform ships became the trend. Because easy to make, simple to make, can easily be rebuilt. Platform ships was the meta, and still kind of is, but players for some reason think nice looking ships equate to workability. It does not. I've seen many of the platform ships made in this timeline here are way better than most of the good looking ships made in this timeline. Like, the ships today, absolute crap compared to the ships of back then. Just way better. And basically, we get to the end now of the history, because there's nothing left to talk about. Now, I will say this. Because of this part, I know people are going to get mad at me. And this part as well, because people wanna believe, won't believe me. But okay, that's fine. Some people can believe me. If you don't want to believe any of this, or don't want to believe parts of this, okay. Well, that's your choice to not believe, you know, the history. Or, like, what really happened. This is what happened. These are the events that happened. And this is what will stay the events. So, I hope you hated this horrible video. And you enjoyed listening to me talk about this timeline. And I hope you absolutely hated it. Goodbye forever.